In this episode, Tommy and I talk a lot about the early tech of FPV and also about the legends. Who were the first folks? Who was in that second generation? And it's a pretty interesting list of people. Uh, This one's a good one. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but, but a lot of the older pilots have a bit of PTSD from ESC flashing. Those of us that have come up in it recently have a little bit of an easier time with a lot of the things that we might take for granted. If you like what I do here, give it a like, subscribe. And if you really like what I do, then you can go subscribe to my Patreon. You can get the podcast version of this as well as the unedited complete cut of this interview and other interviews that are already up there right now. I appreciate your time. We're going to get into it right after this note from our sponsor. Have a great day. You're staring at one of the tallest buildings in the world. Are you afraid? Control frames. Freestyle like you mean it. What would you like if somebody handed you one of those things now? Do you think you could even fly it? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but but like could you but you couldn't fly it like you fly modern stuff. Or could you? You know, me, me, I mean, like I'm completely guessing because I, I obviously don't have one and I haven't tried it in so long and I baby stepped into new technology, obviously up to current, but like, I want to say, I want to say, yeah, but it would, it would just be so much harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it would be one of those things where maybe you can do it to like the 95%, but it would probably also take you three times as long as it would take you to nail something that you would do now. Right. Cause the yeah. stuff now is just so good you'll probably nail it in a couple of tries. Whereas back then you might not even think about it because you just know that it's, you know, you're just, you're just trying to keep it in control most of the time Mm -hmm. back then for sure. (laughs) So if, I mean, if you go back to that old tech, right. And I guess we're talking about what, 2013, 2014 now. Yeah. Would you did anybody, or would you have considered doing something like a big building dive? No, no, <laughs> no way. Like, let me give you, let me give you, I don't even know if this is up on my YouTube channel, but mm. like to give you an example of why that's just a big no, no, like, uh-huh. and I'll even fast forward a little bit. Right. So mm. my, so my first, so I built the tricopter that was just line of sight. And then like my first FPV was this like 10 inch ADS 400 from, from mm. real FPV.com or whatever. And, um, but the, the, my first mini quad was the blackout. And back then it was a 1306 motor. Okay. So let me ask you quickly. When I, when you hear 1306, what size prop do you immediately think of? You don't think of five inch, but that's what you it was. You don't think of five inch, I mean, but guess what? what? It, was. <laughs> it was a five inch. Now let me tell you what, what voltage that was. That was 2S. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So to think 1306 motor swinging a five inch, you know, 5030 gem fan prop on 2S on a mini quad, which mini quads back then was a lot bigger than what they are now. So they're heavier. They're a lot heavier. And I just remember like doing my first like inverted hang because that's like the thing that I like, I want to unofficially say that I I started doing, but Uh whatever, that could be another discussion. And like, I would do it. And then it would fall and to just stop, just to arrest your fall was like a hundred feet. Like it was, 
So there's no way, there's no way you'd be doing it with that tech. There's no way you're going to do a building that with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you did, you'd start pulling up like halfway through and it wouldn't be exciting anyways. Yeah, that's probably. So, I mean, you know, it, it honestly would be, and you know, it, it, I'm as a guy that writes like iOS apps and stuff. Um, everybody's like, oh, I got a great app idea. Um, it sounds like it would be a fun episode, probably a really hard to film and really hard to uh, actually like put together. But it would be really cool to see like you and maybe some of the other older folks do, you know, fly the old equipment, like how you would do it now, or even an approximation. But no, we we actually did. We that didn't. Uh, rotor, did. Yeah, we did that on Rotor okay. right once. But I, would, I would also argue that you know we tried to get the oldest tech possible at the yeah. time, and it was still pretty. pretty new. It was still pretty advanced. Yeah, like I mean, we tried hard. Like because you had I, the Nays, the original Nays thirty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I think it was the Rev Five or the Rev Six, if I recall. Mm -hmm. It was the Rev Five. It was it was actually a red colored board or white or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, we we even about. like went like we even dug deep looking for like an old version of Beta Flight and like it was, but it was still you know that was mm -hmm. I would argue that that was still it was still 4S you know it was still it's still pretty like here's another thing so those that thirteen oh six motor those weren't mini quad motors they were off of a plane. Wait. So you had the 1306 with the little cone adapter on top of it, adding weight, you know, so uh -huh. it might as well have been like a seven inch prop that you're spinning, you know what I mean? In terms of mass. So yeah, man, it was, it's, it's, it's come a long way. Was, was well, that stuff like weight and mass of the prop and things like that? Was that on anybody's radar at that time? No, I don't think so. It, it was at that time. It was just like, everyone was just so happy to kind of, shrink things down you know mm -hmm. and, and it was all new territory so nobody really knew how you needed to design things how thick the carbon is or like whatever like nobody knew anything mm -hmm. it was just the wild wild west we were still trying to figure it out and we were just happy that it wasn't this nine ten inch ginormous mm -hmm. thing you know and uh yeah it was it was a good time it was good times like not to mention just the fact that you couldn't really order parts because they're always out of stock and then when they were in stock, you really only had like, there's like four things that you could buy, but of those four things, really only one of them would actually really work once you connected everything together. Cause the chances are once you soldered everything up, you know, you might let that magic smoke out. And it was, uh, it was, oh man, I feel like I'm just like steamrolling through this field. No, no, you go, no, you go. Man, go. Going right now. Like, um, and I made a, I just very quickly made a video about this, but, ESC flashing. <laughs> yes, I have. I, I saw it. And yes, I actually do remember some of that from way back when. So when you got in, it was still. An you could still. You <laughs> yeah, there were still. You could get the Simon K ESC. Yeah, that was that, the deal. You, you needed to run the Simon K firmware mm -hmm. from May 15 of 20, like 13 or something like that. Uh -huh. Otherwise your stuff was just going to smoke up or like fall out the sky or like ESC sync or desync or something. Like it was, it was bound to happen. Oh yeah. I remember, I remember that. Like if, if you guys don't know, like you, you guys flash ESCs by just connecting to <laughs> USB like, port. Yeah. You hit this button, right? And maybe you're complaining because it takes so long, but back then there was this thing called an Atmel socket and it was this tiny little like, prong thing with pins and you had to line it up on the tiny little chip and then you know like you had to mm -hmm. hold your breath so that you're not like shaking because like once you set it on there and you hit flash you you needed to stay there for like the three minutes <laughs> that it took to flash it was whew, it was rough so i actually experienced i think i guess what would have been the next generation where they had the different adapter so you would plug directly from the esc into the the black cable that would go into your usb port yeah, yeah. But still super sketch. <laughs> it was, you know, and it really made building difficult because, like, you really needed to think about where you put your ESCs and how you wrapped them because, like, you probably needed to update the firmware, like, and, uh, you know, because things were also moving fast. Like, that's the one thing that I feel like didn't change a whole lot is just, like, things are just constantly changing. I would argue that, like, 
you know, the steps and increments back then were a lot larger than they are now. Mm -hmm. But I feel like back then it was like every couple months, here's, you know, here's the next new hot thing, which is perfect just in time because the thing that you were working on probably already caught fire just from, <laughs> you know, from smacking it. I remember if you just smacked a tree or, or not a tree, a leaf, right? You didn't, and you didn't lose control, but if you smacked that leaf, that shot to the system was enough to send a voltage spike to just smoke up your ESC and just catch fire. It was, it was, it was good times for sure. I feel, I feel like catching things on fire is just not as common nowadays. Nah. But it, but it definitely like there is a there's a like a true like battle wound. <laughs> from from guys that have been flying as long as you have about about literally like catching ESCs on fire. I've only ever caught one on fire for what it's worth. Oh, I've done so many, and and that's not even just counting the bench fires. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, yeah, like, the bench those. fires was plenty. That's that's a lot, but just flying like I I remember when Kiss, you know, had just come out with their stuff, and that was like next level. That was really smooth, but goodness if you just crashed like it was toast not just the esc but your motor would go along with it you know and if your esc was placed anywhere close to the flight controller then you know there, there goes all that too but it was really really common you know when we would all meet up to just when you look at people's frames you see like the char marks <laughs> like ah oh, yes, you, you crashed yesterday didn't you yeah, that's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah um, so I, when you started flying FPV and multi-rotors, did you have any inkling that that would become a career? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not at all. That was, it was just something that was for fun. And, you know, like, you know, starting the YouTube and putting videos out wasn't even to be like a YouTube guy. I didn't even know what YouTube was like to me. YouTube was just where you go to upload your video so that you can share it with somebody else. Yeah. And so back then the FPV community was really, really tight knit. And, you know, you did an interview with Boris B freaking awesome guy. And, mm -hmm. you know, there were like just for months and months on end where he would hit me up and be like, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I, I got this new firmware. I, it addresses X, Y, and Z. Why don't you go check it out? And so I would do that. And then I would go make a video and then I would upload it to YouTube. And that was the only reason oh, why. Wow. Yeah, that was it. And then, of course, I would share it in the groups because everyone else mm -hmm. is interested in seeing, oh, what did Betaflight version point whatever, whatever, whatever do with this new feature? How does it fly? And that's how we would share on top of obviously making the posts in like RC groups and whatever forums was prominent at the time. That's really wild. I mean, like, <clears throat> cause you know, everybody gets an FPV now and including me and, and a lot of other folks. And it's like, dude, I'm going to go put it on YouTube. Cause that way I can be a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Like it's yeah. all the other, all the pros are on YouTube and everybody it's loves them. It was, it was very, yeah, it was just very, a very different reason to post to YouTube. And, uh, it was strictly to just share information. Hey, Boris, check it out. Here's, here's, I tried it and here's what it looks like, you know? It, and then it, it morphed into this whole thing where, yeah, YouTube is where you go to be a pro, <laughs> pro I guess. A pro. So <laughs> yeah. when, I mean, you know, when you, when you started, like who were the legends, right? Because you 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 are in the pantheon now, right? But but who were the legends back then? For me personally, it would be Juz Seventy. It would have been uh, Midwest Rob. It would have been X Hover Daniel from X Hover. Um, goodness. I really should have did my homework really quick before I did this. Sh <laughs> this no, 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 you're good. You're good. Um, trappy, I mean, for sure. Trappy. trappy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, there's this other. Oh, this uh, Chris Hatcher. He just went by Chris H. I, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what his YouTube name is. I, I don't even know if you could find his videos on YouTube. And uh, I think 
I think, I think that was about it. And then like kind of at that time when I'll just call it the next generation or, or my generation, then it was like, you know, Metal Danny and it was Boris B and it was Chad Nowak mm -hmm. and uh, Steel and, uh, and those guys. It was, you know, it was wild because in preparing for a lot of this, like I went all the way back to the first video that Blackout put up of the, his, of the, the mini, right? The Blackout mini. Blackout, shoot, I shouldn't even yeah. mention Blackout. Oh, well, yeah. you know, the funny thing about him is that he was almost like he was, like he, you could, he, he could fly for sure, but he almost had like a Bob Ruge-esque feel to him. Cause he was like the mad scientist, like, Oh, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to make it out of carbon fiber and I'm going to cut it down really small. And I'm going to put tiny motor. It was like, what? Yeah. Why? this isn't going to work. Holy shit. It worked. <laughs> do you, do you remember the, the hammerhead? I, th I, I think it's called the hammerhead. Uh, I don't. What okay. was it? A frame? It was a, it was a frame and it came out right at the same time as the blackout mini okay. H. And like, you know, now that I think back on it, like it, this industry really could have went to now, now it would have went carbon fiber for sure. Well, the, the big deal about the hammerhead was it was made out of aluminum, but it was also a mini quad. Uh, okay. And yeah. those were the two kind of like competing new things that kind of took mini quads by storm. And uh, it just so happens that blackout kind of came out on top with really just a shrunken down carbon fiber frame that you see a lot today. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like, had it gone the other way, which I kind of doubt now that I really think about it, because aluminum wouldn't really be ideal. But uh, yeah, there was there was a hammerhead frame, and then there was the mini H blackout, and those were the two that you know at the time, if you wanted to not fly this big ginormous thing, those were your options. That was it. I do know that when I talked to Chris Larue um, from Armaton. Uh, he was talking about how the 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 arms on like the first like everybody was using dowel rods originally on the big 10 inch ones. Um, and I think this was, this was a long time ago. And he said that they got their start by making aluminum arms uh, on their, their frames. Yeah, it was, it was that. And uh, so before carbon fiber, mm -hmm. it was that, and it was uh, G10. G, those, yeah. are the, those are the two materials that everybody built their stuff out of. Yeah. Whew. I, I did when I first got into it. I flew um, uh, the DJI Flame Wheel. Oh yeah, the four the four fifty, and mm -hmm. every time that thing looked at the ground funny, an <laughs> arm would break. <laughs> it was so infuriating! You'd get I mean, it was like plastic. It's flying. Yeah, it was like uh, it was it was pla there were plastic arms plastic. at the end of the day. Yeah. But a lot of people were making frames for it, so they would make like the main body, and then they, you would put those arms on there. That or or a Gowie. That, that those are like the two popular ones. If we were talking mm. just a couple generations before the mini quad craze came up, it was, uh, it was that. So, how does it feel now versus then? Hearing about the gear is always interesting, but the technology is not just about the gear. In the next episode, you get to hear Tommy tell you what he thinks the most impactful technological advancement in FPV is. And I was surprised by what he chose. If you like this, hit the like button, do the subscribe thing. And if you really like what I do here, go over to Patreon. You can get the uncut podcast and the uncut interview all in one place. I hope that you guys have a great day. Bye.